Hi there, and welcome. Thanks for attending Hacks Fall 2015 Online Open House. My name is Emily Fox. I'm the Virtual Learning Admission Counselor here at HACC, Central Pennsylvania Community College. And today, you will have the opportunity to hear about HACC as a whole, but you'll also hear specifically from financial aid, advising and career services, a faculty member, as well as students. So keep in mind, there will be a time at the end for questions, so we're happy to take any questions that you have. Plus, if you're a future HACC student, you'll have the chance to win $1,000 in our tuition giveaway today. And that's good towards the spring or summer uh, 2016 semesters. In case you're new to this Adobe Connect platform, Please know that the presenters are the only ones with microphones, uh, so you do not need to have a microphone. The way that you'll interact with us is using the chat box there on the right-hand side. So if you can hear me, I'd love if you type into the chat box where you're from today. And I'm in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania today. I'm at our Harrisburg campus. Looks like we have Chambersburg, Biglersville. Bearing. Shippensburg. All right. So also here in the central Pennsylvania area. Uh, thanks for sharing. Also, another feature of Adobe Connect besides the chat, there's a poll feature. And I'd like to give it a try here. So I will need your participation for this, please. Um, let me pull up the first poll. The first poll question, how did you learn about Hacks Online Open House? Many different ways you may have heard about the Online Open House. Was it billboard, email, a Hack employee, maybe the web page, Facebook, flyer? Looks like a lot of you that it's Hack employee or the web page. So great. Thanks for your participation in that. Let's try another poll here. Love to know what is your gender, male or female? Looks like we have a lot of females here. And the thing about the open house in this in the fall, it goes from 10 to 2. So we may even have some individuals that are stopping in throughout the day, but at this point it looks like we are all female uh, based to start out our program today. Okay, I have another question for you. I'd love to know your age range. So are you 17 to 23? Or would you like to be 17 to 23? <laughs> are you 24 to 30, 31 to 44? You can see the different options there. So it looks like we have a big variety, and that's typical. Uh, with students that are coming here to hack. All ages are welcome here at hack. And one last poll question that I'll ask for now. And I'll pull it on the screen here. Did the free money towards tuition, so the tuition giveaway that I briefly mentioned at the beginning, the $1,000, influence your decision to participate in this event? Yes, no, kind of, or maybe you didn't even know about it. So that's a nice little surprise for you if you found out about it today. Great. So sounds like that's a surprise for most of you. All right. Well, if you're interested in being entered into the $1,000 tuition giveaway, and like I said, that's good towards the spring or summer 2016 semesters, what I'm going to do is put a link up here on the chat box. And what you'll need to do is go to this link and enter in your information, kind of like a raffle ticket to be put into that drawing. So you'll see that there in the chat box. Please make sure you're doing that here in the next hour or two to be entered into the $1,000 tuition giveaway. So before I jump too far into the program, I do have the pleasure of introducing you to HACS 
president, President Ski, and he'll be joining us via video. And here's a few words from Ski. Welcome to Hack, Central Pennsylvania's community college. Hack is proudly yours, and we're very excited to welcome you to our learning community and share all the options available across our five campuses in virtual learning. Whether you're considering earning a degree, or planning to transfer credits, or want to earn a certificate to advance your job skills, Hack has more than 150 programs to meet your needs. In fact, we offer 13 fully online degrees, such as communications and gerontology, and more than 500 online classes, because we understand that you're busy and may not be able to take classes at our campuses. I hope that you'll seriously think about becoming a student and a graduate, and join so many who have gone on to other prestigious institutions in Pennsylvania, such as Penn State and Millersville, and those outside the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. I do hope that while you're with us, you will take the time to understand the difference we can make in your life and in your family's life. I hope that you'll get to know our innovative and creative faculty. Did you know? that many of our faculty are known around the globe in our health fields, in our manufacturing fields, in our education fields. Did many of you who are in the audience know that if you're in high school or know someone who's in high school, there is a possibility you could earn your hack degree before you earn your high school diploma through dual enrollment or college in the high school? And did any of you know that we offer classes around the globe through our study abroad program that could take you to places like Greece and Thailand and China. And finally, I know many of you are wondering, how am I going to pay for all of this? Well, through financial aid and through scholarships that the college offers, there is a way. Because we so sincerely want you to become a part of Hack's learning community so that you too can make Hack yours. So hopefully you enjoyed the video from President Ski. If you ever have the opportunity to meet him, he is just passionate about students pursuing their education and he cares about each student individually. So hopefully you have a chance to meet President Ski at some point, but glad you could hear a short message from him before we jump into our presentation for today. So I'd like to get started with an overview of HACK, uh, starting off with some statistics. I know many of you are looking into furthering your education. That's why you're here at this open house. And according to the 2012 Bureau of Labor Statistics study, the average growth rate for all jobs through 2022 will be 10 percent. And high growth jobs requiring a two-year degree or less will experience an average growth of 16 to 18 percent. You can see it there on the the bar graph, jobs requiring a four-year degree will increase by 12%. So I believe that HACK has the right mix of programs at our various campuses and online to help you get started towards your goals or towards your career. And on this slide, you'll see our different campuses. Um, HACK has five different campus locations in central Pennsylvania, and HACK stands for Harrisburg Area Community College, but we more commonly started referring to ourselves as Central Pennsylvania's Community College because we're reaching so much further than just the Harrisburg area. So here on this slide, you'll see that we have campus locations in Gettysburg, Harrisburg, Lancaster, Lebanon, and York, as well as online, which can be done essentially from anywhere. At HACK, we have 
over 150 different programs. So even if you're not um, sure what you're interested in studying, we do have students that start out with their general education classes and then can figure out an exact program from there. Does anybody know what program they may be interested in studying? And if so, feel free to type it there in the chat box. So best way to get some initial information about our different programs is by going to the web page. You can view information specific to the different programs. I'll put the link up here for where you can go and look at the programs and courses specifically. Looks like some of you are sharing some nursing, business studies, bookkeeping, so a variety. Uh, nursing is our most popular uh, program here at Hack, and then business is our most popular online degree. And looks like maybe elementary education. And it's okay if you're not sure, you know, what you're hoping to study yet. There's many different options. You can see here on the slide some of the different programs that we offer. And also check out the link that I put there on the chat box. Another great way to find out about specific programs, you'll see here on this next slide, HACK offers some program days. So you'll see on November 4th at 9 a.m., that's on the Harrisburg campus, there's a Health Career Exploration Day. So if you're interested in nursing or anything health career related, that's a great day to find out more. Also, there's two other webinars coming up this fall. There's Building Construction Management webinar, which will be held on October 28th at 1 p.m. That's a Wednesday. So if you're interested in learning out, learning more about that program, or maybe you're not sure uh, what you want to study, that'd be a great day to attend, as well as November 11th, which is a Wednesday as well. That's at 1230 for the communication webinar. So if you're interested in attending one of our future program days, the link is on the slide there. You can go find out more information and register. Virtual learning. There's 13 degrees that are offered fully online, but even if a program is not offered fully online, students can complete their general education courses and sometimes even some of the major courses uh, before coming on campus to finish the degree. So in other words, students can combine virtual learning classes and on-campus courses in his or her schedule. Plus, HACC offers blended classes where half of the classes are, or half of the class is online and half of it's on campus. So instead of coming to campus multiple times a week, students may come once a week, and it's a great way to ease into virtual learning if you're not quite sure if it's a good fit for you or not. And virtual learning, it's really growing in popularity, and one of the biggest reasons I think that it's growing in popularity is because of the flexibility. So here at Hack, our virtual learning classes follow a semester, and as long as the students are following along with the syllabus and meeting their deadlines and due dates, the coursework can be completed when they want. So recently, a student from Egypt attended HACC virtually, and even though he was in a different time zone, it did not matter. He was still able to complete his coursework. And he's actually on our um, Harrisburg campus now, so he ended up coming to one of our physical campuses. But online classes can be great for students who are working or have kids or maybe traveling or involved in the military. You know, this provides the flexibility that may be needed. So location, as I mentioned, is flexible too. This semester at Hack, we have students that are taking online classes here at Hack from half of the states in the United States. So whether you're right next door to Hack or if you're across the country or even across the world, virtual courses can work for you. And I'll talk more about resources later on, but I do want to note here that virtual learning students have the same resources and opportunities as students on campus. So even if a student is taking fully online classes and they live close to one of our campuses, they can come right on campus and use any of the campus resources or services as well. The last thing I'll mention here on this slide, I'd like to highlight hacks iTunes U courses and collections. 
I would imagine most of you have heard of iTunes for music, but iTunes U is a free supplemental material, um, and students do not earn college credit, but they get to hear from passionate college professors and maybe get a different perspective on a particular area of study. So Hack actually started iTunes U courses back in 2012 along with Yale, Stanford, Duke, MIT, and Open University. And we do offer classes on there, math, English, accounting. There's even courses through iTunes U that prepare students for placement testing and many, many other options. At Hack, we offer a bunch of different um, pathways that you can go through. Career associate degree, that's if a student is attending full time, which is 12 credits or more. A career associate degree is expected to take two years. And once the student graduates, they then enter the workforce of, upon completion. The transfer associate degree takes the same amount of time as a career associate degree. However, instead of going out into the workforce, students have the goal to continue on at a four-year institution for another two years to obtain a bachelor's degree. HACC also offers certificates, and certificates usually take about a year. Typically, individuals who are already working in a field and want a specialty area or you know, maybe an occupational skill can go through and get a certificate. So here at HACC, we have a graphic design certificate, uh, baking and pastry arts. Uh, there's trade programs such as welding, HVAC, and gerontology. Those are some of the different certificates we have here at HACC. And then also diplomas. Diplomas often take a few months to complete, and it focuses in on a technical or occupational skill, not taking the whole big package of the general education courses, but just focusing in on the exact skill. So here at Hack, we have auctioneering, we have um, culinary arts catering, child development, and some of the trades programs um, have some specialty areas for diplomas as well. Let's talk specifically more about the transfer associate degrees. One third of Hack students pursue a transfer associate degree at Hack, and it can be referred to sometimes as a two plus two program, where two years are completed at a community college and then two years at a four-year institution. So Hack has articulation and transfer agreements set up with numerous schools, where it's already been predetermined that whatever you take here at Hack will transfer right with you into the next school's program. So on this slide, you can see some of the schools that Hack students have transferred to. Uh, Penn State is the number one transfer school, but certainly it is not limited to the schools on this slide. Hack is an accredited institution, so many of the credits will transfer to another institution. And my advice to you, if you're hoping to transfer and, and go through the transfer associate degree, work very closely with an advisor, and it can also be very helpful to choose what four-year institution you want to go to after attending Hack. Hack also offers workforce programs. Uh, there's adult education pathways, so if you need a GED or maybe go through our language institute for English as a second language. There's also community education, so for instance, Current courses that are being offered through our community education are aquatic exercise classes, planning for retirement, there's some Microsoft Word and Excel courses available, CPR, and many other community education courses. Health care education is also available through Workforce. HACC has medical billing and coding, uh, nursing, nurse aid, and massage therapy. Two other areas of the workforce, there's manufacturing, management, and technology. So that would be, examples would be uh, going for your CDL or forklift, automotive technology, and then also public safety. So law enforcement, fire, um, and 
fire science, and then also EMT, you know, anything related to the public safety realm uh, would be going through the workforce program. College Pathways, this is certainly a program that has taken off here at HACC, where high school students have the opportunity to get a jump start on their college career, earning college credit. So it's open to high school juniors and seniors. There's college in the high school, where students take classes at their specific high school, and it's taught by one of their high school teachers. It's $50 a credit. HAC also has dual enrollment, where the students will take classes on a campus or online. That's $100 per credit. Early College Academy is where students can take classes and student success sessions, and that's done through our Gettysburg campus. And then also the SOAR program. So students that are involved with career and technical centers may be able to earn credits uh, through that and bring them with them to hack. So just make sure as students, if you are a junior or a senior, or maybe you know someone who's a junior or senior, please encourage them to work closely with their guidance counselor and also an admission counselor here at HACC. I'd like to talk more about HACC's prestige. Uh, HACC is accredited by the Middle States, which ensures that high-quality education. And we do have many opportunities for our students to become involved uh, through Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, through our Bucknell Community College Scholars, and also, you know, there's different honors classes available for students. HACC also offers the opportunity for students to get involved, and we encourage you to do so to make the most of your experience while being a HACC student. So HACC offers the opportunity to study abroad. Uh, we've had biology students go to the Bahamas. We've had uh, students studying photography go to Ireland. Nursing students have gone to Haiti. Um, I believe we have students in England right now. So all across the world, you're able to study abroad while still going through and getting your credits for a HACC class. There's also some ways to get involved through student life. There's many clubs, student government. There's International Awareness Club. There's a Virtual Learning Student Advisory Council. There's also the Fourth Estate, which is our award-winning student newspaper, and many other clubs, and just giving you a taste of some of the, the clubs that HACC offers. Sports are also available through HACC. HACC offers uh, basketball, volleyball, cross-country, soccer, and golf. Talking about student services as well, we're here to support you here at HACC. We want you to be successful, and we offer these different services to help you. Uh, one of those services is through career services, where we can help you write a resume, uh, pick out the correct major or a career. Also, they do mock interviewing through career services and help you with internship opportunities, and then hopefully eventually landing a job. Advising and counseling is available to all students, disability services, military and veterans affairs. Uh, at HACC, we are very vet friendly. We're the second highest veteran enrollment in Pennsylvania. And a perk for those involved with the military is that they receive in-state tuition regardless of where you live and can also register a week early. Another service is uh, our Welcome Center. Any questions related to financial aid, registration, or a lot of times general questions, maybe it's about your login information, the Welcome Center can assist with that. So I'd like to run through the admission steps. Uh, the first step is to apply online, and that's at HACC. Edu. It's free to apply, and I'd encourage you to do so today if you're planning to come to HACC. 
Also, we encourage all students to look into their financial aid options, and the first step is to fill out your FAFSA, which stands for Free Application for Federal Student Aid, and that can be found at fafsa.gov. Our students also go through placement testing. It's not times, but it usually takes our students about two hours to go through it um, and to determine what class would be best for you to start at. Placement testing can be done on campus or online. And then after the placement testing, our students go through new student orientation. You learn about you know, helpful resources and policies and how to be a successful student at HACC. We encourage all students to attend a new student orientation online, but if you're absolutely not able to make it on a campus, we do have the orientation available online as well. And then from there, our students register for classes with the help of an advisor, and um, November 9th is when new student registration begins. Also, after students register for classes, um, paying for tuition is the step after that. And for the 2015-2016 school year, it's 250 per credit. If you live in state in one of HAC's 22 sponsored school districts, most of the sponsored school districts are in the Harrisburg area. And then it's 250 per credit if you live in state but not in one of HAC's sponsored school districts, and 298 per credit if you live out of state. I will put the link of our tuition as well as you can find out um, some information about the 22 sponsored school districts. I'll put that here in the chat box so you can check that out if you're interested. Like I just mentioned, for new student registration, that would be for the spring semester. That begins on November 9th. Many of the courses for the spring start on uh, January 19th. So before I transition, I do want to give you a quick reminder. If you're interested in being entered into the $1,000 tuition giveaway and you're a new student here at HAC, uh, please Fill out the information at the SurveyMonkey link that's provided in the chat box there. I know winning $1,000 for a tuition giveaway is a, a great help in paying for college, but you may be interested in knowing what are some other ways that students can successfully pay for college education. So I have the perfect person here to talk about your options. Today, Leanne Freck, it, she's hacked my Director of Financial Aid is with us for the program, and I'll be giving the presentation here over to Leanne. Hi, everybody. Very nice to uh, meet all of you. Um, as Emily mentioned, I'm the Director of Financial Aid here at HACC, and uh, today we're just going to give you a brief overview of the financial aid process, kind of introduce you to our office, and tell you a little bit about what we do. So if you take a look at um, the presentation, this screen just gives you a real brief um, uh, kind of dip your toe into understanding uh, how many students here receive financial aid. And as you can see, well over half of our students receive some type of financial aid um, funding. And that funding can come from the federal government, the state, or the college itself. Uh, and, a lot, and what we have here are foundation scholarships. And if you take a look, there's um, over $700,000 in foundation scholarships awarded every year to our students. And that number actually increases every year because we have very generous donors who believe in you and want to help you make your education a little more affordable. And our average scholarship uh, for a student is about $1,000 a year. And we usually split that between the fall and the spring semester. So that can help significantly for some of you to kind of offset your cost here. <clears throat> we also have work-study programs or employment programs on campus. And work-study um, is a need-based program. And we'll talk about uh, in a minute or so how you apply for that. But the work-study award is really beneficial, I think, for students who qualify because you can uh, actually work on, on a, in a 
department uh, either on campus or we have some off-campus community service agencies who participate and students receive um, not only a paycheck but they receive skills they learn how to do work that they might be interested in uh, and oftentimes they uh, make great relationships with their employers and so you have a reference when it's time to go out and go job you know job searching so you have someone who can vouch for your character and for your work ethic and I think that's really valuable in today's world we also have other types of financial aid uh, loans of course our uh, students can borrow to help pay for their college education and the average loan that a student takes out here is about 5600 a year but what I want to mention is that hack is quite affordable and we have many students who are able to pay for their education uh, with free money and that's the next line of it. free money uh, programs are Pell, SEOG, and FIA State Grants. And we award well over $37 million in those. <coughs> Excuse me. So many of our students are able to get out of school without loan debt. And that really is what you should be shooting for when you are trying to go to school, is to try to minimize that loan debt or finish your, um, your undergraduate degree with no loan debt and if you are smart and you apply for financial aid on time and you do it early enough uh, and maybe you combo that with work study you you can possibly get out and and be able to um, not have very much loan debt when you when you graduate and that's always the goal when we talk about the cost to attend hack um, it's important to note that there are two basic different types um, we talk about actual costs versus budgeted cost and the actual costs for students are what you will be billed for through the school here so those are things like your tuition um, your fees and possibly your books that you you may charge to your account here the budgeted cost are what the financial aid office uses to determine how much financial aid you can receive so we are going to look at those actual costs the tuition the fees but we're also going to build some things in there like room and board personal expenses transportation and what that does is actually give you a higher budget so that you can be considered for more financial aid and it tries to accommodate some of the related costs that you may have when you attend attend college for the 14-15 year the tuition and fees were uh, our 250 a credit uh, that carried through for this fall and spring um, and a three credit class costs approximately seven hundred and fifty dollars so that is pretty reasonable if you compare um, colleges around the area you will see that uh, our cost for for attending here is very very reasonable Emily had mentioned how uh, students need to apply for financial aid and she mentioned the FAFSA website that is the very first step in getting this whole ball rolling you do need to apply for financial aid you fill out the FAFSA form and you'll hear us refer to that often um, you will reapply every single year and if you want to attend this uh, spring semester which is coming up and that's the term that runs from January to May you want to make sure you file your 1415 FAFSA immediately because it is uh, imperative that you get that in uh, I'm sorry oh I'm looking at the slide here I think I think it might be off a little bit the spring 16 <laughs> and summer 16 guys I have to fix that for you you need to fill out the 1516 FAFSA okay and you want to do that as quickly as you can I apologize for the slide being wrong there Emily had mentioned the website is fafsa.gov this um, is the only website you should be using the uh, and you should never ever ever pay to file the FAFSA <clears throat> as far as applying for foundation scholarships uh, the ad, uh, the website that's showing on the screen there, the hack.academicworks.com, you can find on our hack website and very easy to apply for scholarships. You fill out one form 
And what it does is it searches all the scholarships that we have in the foundation and it looks to make sure that you're, or to see what you're eligible for. But you do have to have your FAFSA done before you can apply for scholarships. And in some cases, you should really be enrolled in your classes. So I would encourage you to, um, if you, if you want to pursue this route, to make sure that you apply early uh, for admission and apply for your financial aid and get yourself registered as quickly as possible so that you stand a, a good chance of being looked at for the scholarships. And you want to make sure you check your Hawk mail because that's how we communicate with you and that's how the foundation communicates with you. And if you're eligible for a scholarship, that's how they'll, they'll let you know. Okay. We have some other payment plan options. Uh, if you, and you can combo this with financial aid. It's not one or the other. So if you apply for financial aid and perhaps you don't want to take out any loans, but you've got some free money that you can use, that will reduce your bill and then you might want to use a payment plan. Or perhaps some of you have an employer who is willing to pay a portion of your education. You're very, very lucky if you have that, so you should definitely take advantage of it. There's the Office of Vocational Rehabilitation, and that's for students who have some sort of um, uh, challenge. It could be physical or it could be uh, academically challenged, and they will help uh, fund part of your education, and we have quite a few students who do that as well. I'm not sure if any of you are veterans, but we certainly have uh, students who are utilizing their VA benefits. We have a VA office on each of our campuses, and they can help you with that. And then, of course, we have private scholarships. And if you go out to our website, <clears throat> www.hack.edu, and then go under Paying for College, we have links to several outside groups who fund our students or who have scholarships for our students, and you can apply for those online as well. The one thing I would encourage you to do is make sure that you make friends with the financial aid office because they can help you navigate this process. I know if it's your first time doing it, sometimes it's um, you know a bit daunting or you uh, are uncertain what kind of information to provide and they can help you with that. We even have FAFSA completion sessions, just watch for ads for that. Uh, we usually have at least one in, this, in the spring term to help you. Um, but when you file your FAFSA, you're always asked for the prior year information. And sometimes that does not always reflect what your current situation is. So if you've experienced, when you fill out your FAFSA, you'll use your prior year income. But if since that time you've lost your job, or maybe you have a change in your income, you should contact the financial aid office and just talk it through with them so they can help you. Okay. We also have something called uh, what we call professional judgments. <clears throat> and there are some students who have had uh, some pretty tough experiences in their lives and perhaps they don't have access to parental information or their parents refuse to provide uh, information on the FAFSA if the student is, in de is dependent. And if that's your case, if when you get in and start to fill out the FAFSA, um, if you see that parents' information is required and, and for some reason they refuse to do it or you can't have them provide it, then please contact financial aid. And again, they'll walk you through the details of that. Okay. I, the last slide is just some general information. Uh, of course, you can always visit the financial aid on office uh, or at the campus, you know, directly in the office, or uh, you can email them. We have contact information on our website if you wish to do that, or you can just call the 1-800-ABC-HACK number and they can also help you that way. So uh, any one of those will work. Uh, we do want you to contact us. We want, you to, we want to help you as much as possible, but we always encourage students not to wait to the last minute because that's when it becomes very, very tough to, to get it all done for you and make sure that um, you have the funding in place to make it a very smooth transition into your education. So. Um, with that said, I will turn it over to Emily.
Thankfully, Ann, and at this time, the program will transition to Deb Redmond. She's HACS success coach, and she'll be overviewing some different resources that can help you choose the right program of study to go down in order to reach a career. So, Deb, I'll be passing it over to you. That. You know, one of the things we do in advising is, is shift very quickly from what isn't working to what is. Um, and I guess that's a good introduction to me and my uh, role here at Hack. As you can see from the slide that's on the screen now, um, I am the student success coach. And you might think of me um, as an advisor, and that is certainly one of the things that I do. But I help students be successful, both in entering uh, the college and uh, choosing a program of study. I help students to be successful while they're here as a student. Um, and move through their program efficiently. And then I help students on uh, the end of things, either to transfer to where they want to go or to become successfully employed. Um, and you can see the pictures that I chose there uh, give you some indication of uh, the programs that I work with. Uh, I advise in a broad range of programs here at HACC in the technical majors, such as administrative office management and computer information systems. I also work in the skilled trades programs with programs such as home building remodeling. Um, and I also advise in the health sciences, including uh, healthcare management and gerontology. Um, it helps to, uh, to know that although many of our advisors are trained in a broad range of majors, um, it's good to talk with somebody who knows the specifics of uh, the degree programs that you're interested in. I see that some of you had typed in earlier the majors that you're interested in. I would say specifically in business, which I'll give as an example. It's easy to get confused. Um, and in health careers, the pathways um, are very specific, and so it's really good to talk with a healthcare advisor as you move through your program. Um, you may have been hearing these questions. It's the most frequent that come up. Um, so what's your major? I hear you're going to college. What are you going to do with that when you're done? Um, are you going to transfer? If so, where? Those are a lot of things to take into account. And you may be getting advice from friends, from family, from coworkers. Um, you need to think about how you can support your family, but uh, reach out for your dreams and what you're good at or what you can become good at. So many things for you to be thinking about. That can be uh, quite confusing. And so your answer to this question of what are you going to do with all this and what are you going to study, maybe I, I don't know. And that's fine. It's absolutely fine. You don't have to know at this point. Um, but you can still move ahead, and that's very important. You don't have to have a firm decision to keep taking steps to move forward. And I would like to give you some opportunity to think about how you might be able to move ahead, either to confirm that you are headed in the right direction or to give you direction if you feel like you don't have any. Some ways that you can keep moving forward is to take some classes. And uh, one of the most common programs of studies is called general studies, meaning a student is taking a variety of classes that are very likely to transfer. Um, and if you're going to do that, we often suggest that you take at least one class that's specific to a major to see, is that the right pathway for you to take? Sometimes you take the class and decide it isn't at all what you liked. Um, and sometimes you take a class not thinking you're going to enjoy that and find out, wait, this is my passion. This, this is where I belong. This is absolutely right for me. Uh, a more formalized option for you to pursue is the career development and decision making course. Um, and that's the course number there. That's what this stands for, FS101. Um, and it is a, a class, just like any other that you would take, that includes assessments that help you know um, what your skills and abilities are, uh, includes guest speakers in a variety of industries to help you think about uh, things you might not have considered before. Um, and the point of the class, then, is to help you move forward again with your thinking um, and clarify your career direction. Talking with family 
um, and friends is also a great source of information to keep you moving forward. Um, many people choose their original career choice because you know they knew somebody who did that who enjoyed doing it, or they stay away from careers that they heard from somebody like they didn't like doing that. Unfortunately, for most of us, our our career background is limited to people we've run into who do that. So broaden your uh, circle of friends that you ask about what they do and how they like their job and what are the advantages and disadvantages because every job has them. Professors are also a great source of information, especially adjunct professors. Um, an adjunct professor is someone who teaches maybe one or two classes at an institution, but generally is also working in that field um, as their full-time job. And so they know a lot about the industry because they're working at it. And so do the professors who work full time. But uh, don't forget about adjunct faculty. They know a lot of information about what's currently going on in any industry. Other students can be a source of information and people that you work with. I would encourage you to volunteer or job shadow. Um, not only does this give you things to put on your resume, which is very important when you're looking for a job, but it helps you to know that this is, yeah, what I want to do, or I didn't realize that it was going to be like that. Um, uh, the Career Center can help you arrange that if you don't have a job contact to um, visit a workplace or, or to volunteer somewhere. And last but certainly not least is to meet with and talk with a counselor or an advisor or career services. Um, we. In this case, those three terms are somewhat interchangeable. All of those people can help you think through your career choices, your major choices, um, and help you move ahead with a decision. So there are some resources to help you. These are hyperlinks if you're able to access them from the, um, from the PowerPoint at a later date, but they are also available through the hack.edu website under Career Services. Career Coach um, is a, a short assessment and uh, a resource to look things up. Um, it's very self-explanatory. You enter, um, say, dental hygiene. And then it will tell you, and this is very important, the statistics related to that in central Pennsylvania. There's lots of information on the internet, but it's generally national statistics or even statewide statistics. What's included on Career Coach is specifically Central Pennsylvania information, which is very, very useful to know how many job openings there are in that field, what are the median um, wages in this area, and how do you go about training for such a career like that, and it connects it with the majors here at HACC. I also like very much, what can I do with this major? Oftentimes students start with a major and then say, okay, now what am I going to do with that? Um, and that's a very helpful website. Um, find your major on there, and then not only does it come up with two or three suggestions, but it's usually pages and pages and pages of what you can do with a major in history, a major in psych. Um, oftentimes, it's the liberal arts majors who love their field but aren't quite sure what they're going to do with it. Um, but there are many, many options, um, and that's a great website to help you with it. Our library services here have come up with the Career Library Guide there um, that collects a lot of resources um, that can help you take more assessments if you um, want to, um, well, I guess what most people call a career test, although you certainly can't fail it, um, that would give you more guidance about a direction that you might take. So you got all this information. And you may have heard in, this is very common in high school, just do what you love, uh, whatever your passion is. Find out what your passion is, what lights you up inside, and go ahead and do that. And that's great advice, but it's incomplete. You also may have heard, do what you're good at. You know, you're good at this, you might as well do it and get paid for it. That's also good advice, but somewhat incomplete. And then you may also have heard the advice, just get a job. You need to support yourself, you got bills to pay, be sure that when you're done with all this that you're able to get a job. All those messages together, you take all that information, and this is one of my very favorite graphics uh, about career planning because it encompasses all three of those. What you want to think about is what do you want to do, what do you do well or can learn to do well, and then how can you get paid to do that? And when you have all three of those things working together in that sweet spot right in the middle where all those three converge, then you're on the right track. Um,
So we'd like to say here at Hack, please begin with the end in mind. Um, you have a lot of other things on your mind right now, but if you think about where you want to go when you're done with your schooling, we're in a much better position to help you map out how can you get there. If you don't really know where you're going, that's fine. We can help you move forward. But the sooner you've got your eyes on the prize, then we know better how to assist you to do that. And one of the ways that you need to think about that is a major or a career. The major is what you are going to study in your coursework that gives you the background knowledge to move on to a career. And the career is actually what you're going to do. Um, you can either start with your major and then pick a career that, that grows from that. That makes sense. It's also uh, a more focused way to go about this is to ask yourself, what would you like to do when you're done? And then find a major that supports that journey. So you got another thing to think about, and Emily was talking about this earlier. Are you moving on from hack to more school or to more work? Um, and that brings up transfer associate's degrees and career associate's degrees. And this may sound like a foreign language to you, but it's the reason we're going over it twice, and it's also the reason you have an advisor to help you through this. A transfer associate's degree is intended to help you transfer to another institution to continue your education. That's often a four-year school a four-year degree program, or graduate or professional school, medical school, law school. Um, students do start at a community college like HACC and move on to four-year schools and then go to med school or law school or pharmacy school. Um, and an articulation agreement may also be uh, a phrase you had not heard before. It's a fancy way of saying somebody at another school, say, for example, Penn State Harrisburg, has sat down with the advisors at HACC and talked about the classes that we offer and the classes that they want to see on a student's transcript when they transfer. And we have come to an agreement that this class will count for that class. And why that's important to you if you plan to transfer is that ideally we would like you to move through your program as efficiently and um, as economically um, as possible. So we don't want credits not to transfer or to transfer only as elective as, and not as things you need. We can't promise you that we'll all work out perfectly, but the closer you adhere to the articulation agreement, the better off you are because someone has already planned this pathway out for you. So if you know where you would like to transfer, that's perfect. We can see if we have an articulation agreement with that transfer institution, Millersville, Shippensburg, and institutions outside of Pennsylvania. Um, and we can follow that program. And if not, that's also fine. If you want to transfer somewhere where no one else has transferred before and we don't have an articulation agreement, it only means that you need to be in contact with that institution and ask, what would you like to see on my transcript when I transfer? And to make sure that the classes you're taking here at Hack then transfer effectively and you don't lose credits as you transfer. If you don't plan to transfer and you are planning to go to work when you're done at Hack. Um, you have many options, and these are career associates degrees. Um, and they are called nested credentials, um, meaning that you can start with the diploma and move on to a certificate and move on to a career associates. Um, so you can start, say, um, welding is a, is a good example of this. And it doesn't have to be a technical skill trade. But you can take a few classes in um, welding and get a job, and get a job that will support yourself, by the way. You can do twice as much work and be a more skilled welder in more different um, areas of welding, and that's a certificate, twice as much as a diploma. If you want to have your associate's degree, there is also all those credits then feed into the career associates of technology studies, where you get the academic background as well, English, math, history, social science, and you have a well-rounded academic background. And just because you're in a career associates track doesn't mean that you can't also transfer to a four-year degree. It just means that you need to be all the more careful what classes you're taking so that everything transfers neatly. Um, but for example, I noticed that one of you uh, mentioned business. Um, 
as your intended area of study. And this is a common misconception, so it, it'll kind of uh, give you an example of what I'm talking about. Suppose you want to get your bachelor's degree in business management. You might think that the best choice of major here for you at Hack is the business management program, but that's a career associate intending to have you transfer to, to go to work, um, not to transfer to a four-year program. It doesn't mean that you can't. It just means that it's actually the business administration program is the general background that has the right credits to transfer into a four-year business management program. Um, and if you're confused about that, don't worry. We know that this is all confusing, and that's why you have an advisor. Um, as my good friend Calvin Harrison, who's been an advisor for many, many years, says, there is help available, but it doesn't make house calls. So please use your advisor, your professors, and the staff at the Career Center to help you understand all of these uh, different pathways through HACK so that you're on the right pathway. All you need to do is ask. We'd be glad to help work this all out. You don't need to remember everything that I said. Um, I'm sure you won't. It doesn't matter because that's my job to know the answers to those questions. So please use your advisor and your professor and the Career Center staff to help you get all of those questions answered. I'd be glad to answer any chat things you have um, if they're not too specific and would apply to the whole group. Or I can turn it back over to Emily if you don't have questions. Well, thanks, Deb. We'll see if any questions come in. But please do know we will have question and answer session at the end, too. So if you think of any questions later on, uh, you're welcome to ask them. So I hope you found it helpful to hear from Deb about the different resources available to you in your search to find the right program and career. I will give another reminder, and maybe some of you are new uh, since I have given this uh, reminder about our $1,000 tuition giveaway. We have a drawing today, and it's good towards the spring or uh, summer semesters that are coming up. If you're interested in being entered into the $1,000 tuition giveaway, please make sure you put your raffle, so to speak, in at the SurveyMonkey link, which was just posted there in the chat box. So at this time, I'd like to turn the program over to Jasmine Simpson. Uh, she's Virtual Learning Student Success Manager. She's also a faculty member at Hack, and she may be able to give you perhaps a different perspective on becoming a student at Hack. So Jasmine. Thanks so much, Emily. Hopefully everyone can hear me OK. I'm really excited to be with you this this morning and um, a little bit into the afternoon on this nice fall day. And I welcome you again to the online open house. We're excited that you're here with us today. Um, so, so thanks so much, uh, Emily, for sharing just a little bit of my background. As she shared, I'm the student success manager. I have a really unique role. Um, I work directly with students. So once you are registered for classes at Hack and specifically online classes, I communicate with students on a frequent basis and help to get them started successfully. Um, I'm here also just to share a little bit more about what it means to be an online student and from a faculty's perspective. Um, another role that I do play um, is also uh, I serve as the advisor for our Virtual Learning Student Advisory Council, and I see that we have one of our students are here today, uh, Stacy Cullen, who serves as one, our communications chairperson with the VLSAC. Um, so thanks so much for, for being here. I do have a question. I'm just wondering with the, the students who are attending today or you know, prospective students who are attending today, ha how many, uh, have you ever taken an online class before or maybe done some online training, for instance? Just curious to know. And please feel free to share in the chat. And Stacey, this is great. So what, what exactly did you do? Or was it a class or was it a training specifically? I'm just curious. So it looks like three have not, but... Oh, okay, so great homeschooling. So you have some um, basic understanding about what it means to be a student in an online environment. Um, so what would you share maybe one thing that you've learned from this experience that you had um, as participating um, with online schooling through homeschooling? Hey, 
And Jalen, I'm also curious to know um, what what type of training or schooling did you do as well? And Stacy, you are you are absolutely correct. Make sure you have a schedule and that you read the work that is provided for you. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, so in online classes, we do share a syllabus, just like a face-to-face -face class. Um, sometimes that's given to students prior to the class beginning, and it's really important you stick to your schedule. And kind of going along with that, oh, okay, so Penn State Harrisburg class, thanks for sharing that. Um, so going along with that idea that Stacy shared is that one of the most important things that I see that students maybe have some challenges with is time management. Um, and sometimes online classes, if you're taking them and you're mixing them between face-to-face -face classes or maybe doing some blended classes, it can be easy to forget that you have an online class, um, that you have to actually log into your class and check it um, because you're not actually going to a physical space that you have to attend every so often. So time management is such an important um, skill that it's important to hone and develop as you're working in an online environment, taking online classes. Um, many of my students find that you know are will have a the week open up with different activities, and it's important to read through that information to kind of try to plan out your week and to make sure that you're dedicating time um, for either reading your textbook or reading the material online, and then also studying for quizzes. Um, so quizzes in an online environment, a lot of people will ask questions about that. Um, we, most of our classes, of course, are available through our, our learning management system. Um, there are opportunities to come into campus for certain exams that you take uh, that you cannot do online, such as math. Um, but most of the exams and quizzes that are taken can be done in an online environment and use a variety of means. You can have short, short answer questions. You can have essay questions or multiple choice or true and false. So there is, or matching questions, for instance. Um, that is all done through our learning management system. So Jalen, you're taking a Penn State Harrisburg class, and this is an online class. So I'm curious to know what is one thing that you might recommend a student need to be aware of when taking a class online through your experience at Penn State? As you're taking time to type in there, I'll just also share some other things that, that students aren't maybe aware of in an online environment. A lot of students think that you can't necessarily develop relationships. Um, that is, in fact, um, quite the contrary. Uh, I am involved with my students, and we have introductory discussion posts, and students often share things about themselves in that type of setting. Um, and many times, the students are helping each other and making connections with each other. And sometimes, uh, I have established partners in my class that I, I will ask my students to make sure that you get a partner so that you can talk with your partner about maybe how the class is going or if you get stuck somewhere or you have a question. So sometimes, they rely on each other in that way. Um, but my students are also very encouraging. The class that I teach is an FS102 Intro to College Experience class. And this class really goes into detail about time management and um, also, you know, careers as well. Um, we also go into more detail about making wise decisions and making sure that you can take a hold of your ed education and motivate yourself to persist, um, even sometimes being resilient and making sure that you stay on track to meet your goals. So I, I would agree with you that, yes, time management is a big, is a big one. And it, you can also get distracted very easily when you're taking an online class. So it's important to make sure you know you turn off your phone or make sure your notifications are turned off and that you don't have your, you know, some of your social media pages open so that you can focus and have un uninterrupted time um, to work on your online class. Um, but again, going back to the relationships that you can develop, um, a lot of students feel, even that I've talked with face-to-face -face students, said, you know, I didn't realize that, you know, I could develop relationships with other students in an online environment, that we could have some deep discussions. Um, so many students do find that to be a benefit, and that you don't have to, you know, if you're shy in the classroom, raising your hand to speak up, that element of um, shyness that maybe does not exist in an online environment, because you're behind a computer, so you might be more inclined to share a little bit more about what you're, what you're thinking, so that you don't, you know, no one's seeing or looking at you or you're not, you know, worried about what how people will react to what you're saying. Um, so it's important, of course, that the instructor creates a safe space for students to be able to do that. If you're unsure about taking an online class, I do encourage students to, of course, consider doing a blended class or even taking maybe a one credit cl online class to start out with to see if you would be interested in taking an on online class. Those Sometimes those things do help. And I know that Emily has, has a self-assessment that we have available on our website through through our virtual learning pages, and perhaps you might be sharing a little bit of that later, but that also gives you an idea of if you're a good fit for the online environment. 
It's also important to make sure that you ask questions. Um, sometimes instructors can't see if you have like a, you know, a scrunched up face and you're wondering, well, I wonder what that means or I'm not quite sure. Um, so there are things that necessarily can't be mimicked in a face-to-face -face environment, but that's why we encourage students to make sure that they're asking lots of questions and seeking to understand concepts and theories that are being taught within the online class. So that's important to remember, making making contact with your instructor and making sure that you have, you know, good communication and, and letting them know if you're maybe going out of town, for instance, or not going to have access to, to Internet. Um, maintaining open line of communications is a good um, trait of a successful online student. Another thing I would share is that you also have to be willing to problem solve if issues are to arise. Um, with technology, sometimes you just never know. Uh, you never know what could go wrong. You never know, you know, what what might crop up, or if you have a power outage. It's important to have a backup plan, um, and that you have the willingness to kind of work through some of those technical issues if things were to arise. And keeping handy, um, you know, where to find help and a contact list of information to to review and know who to go to if you run into any issues. Yeah, and as um, Deb Bremen shared, our success coach, is that sometimes you have more time to respond and have more more self-reflection in an online environment when you're having discussions. And that is such an important piece and a, a soft skill that many students will build as a result of taking online classes. And you'll be typing a lot, so that's another way that you can work on your writing and making sure that you're you know, reviewing that information to check for clarity and um, editing and grammar, any grammar updates that you may want to have as a part of that space. That can all be done in a very unique way in an online environment. And, and yes, we have a team of people here at Hack, and if you do run into some, some issues, there's always help right around the corner or a phone call away or an email away, depending on what your needs are. So we are working to improve even some of those uh, resources that we provide for students who are taking online classes. And we're always constantly looking for new ways to make sure students are having a good experience. Um, but it is important to make sure that you can work through any problems that might exist. Um, you know, associated with your online class. Some instructors do use different learning management systems. Um, they will communicate that to you prior to the class beginning. Um, and then if you do run into, you know, challenges there, there's you, typically not that many. Maybe in the beginning of the semester, our students are trying to get situated and figure things out. Um, that's why we do hold certain programs prior to the semester beginning to make sure students are prepared for a, a strong and a successful start to their online classes. So I don't want to make you feel that, that we have, oh my gosh, you know, there's going to be tons of tech issues because that, that's not necessarily the case. It's just that you have to be willing to kind of make sure you're reading through the information and work through them if something were to occur. As an online student, some traits that, that might also exist for students who are successful in that environment is making sure that you're committed. I'm committed to making a schedule and reading your information, that you are dedicated, logging in and checking in constantly or asking questions if you have questions. Um, and all, also online students are motivated. They're motivated to make sure that they're doing, meeting the needs and following the schedule and, and, you know, submitting Dropbox assignments or making sure that they're checking in their online class, following the syllabus, looking at the calendar as well so, so that they're not missing assignments. So those are all would be traits of successful um, online students. Committed, dedicated, and motivated. Another thing that I will share, too, um, as, as your students considering online classes, is that we do have opportunities for students to be involved. Um, there are many things that we do offer. We have a Virtual Learning Student Advisory Council, which you heard Emily mention and I mentioned earlier. Um, and the VLSAC, for short, um, is doing some really unique programs. They have an access code reimbursement program. It's an opportunity to develop your leadership skills. Um, there's also a library buyback program. So they're doing so many things um, to help with services related to students who are taking online classes. Another service um, that is offered is Smart Thinking, which is online tutoring. And that is available 24-7. So if you do get stuck somewhere, you need some additional help, and you're like, oh, no, it's 3 in the morning. I can't contact my instructor. They're not available. There's a neat resource that we do offer online students um, again, that is available 24-7. So help is definitely there. So we, again, don't want students to feel isolated that they're alone in the process. There are people here that care about your success and want to make sure that you do maintain that throughout the semester. Well, if there aren't any questions at this time, I'd be happy to turn it back over to Emily so that she can move on with the next step in the program. 
Oh, yes, and as um, um, Deb shared, uh, it is important to have a backup plan if you, you do have technical issues that may arise. Like, say, for instance, your computer stops working or your hard drive went to kaput. Um, it's important to make sure that you do have a backup plan, such as a you know portable hard drive to save all of your documents and saving them in multiple places is, is important. Um, or going to use the internet at a you know Starbucks or McDonald's that has, offers free internet service. Those are things that you might also want to consider as an online student. Um, just like you have backup plans for when you're taking face-to-face -face classes, the same case is also can be said for students who are taking online classes. So thank you so much, Deb, for for sharing that. And Stacy, I don't know. So if you have anything else to share or Jalen, please do feel free. Oh, great, you have some questions. Fire away, I'm ready. Oh, absolutely. These are some really great questions. So we are a nationally accredited institution. That means you can take classes at HEC and you can transfer those credits to many institutions depending on the type of class you're trying to transfer. And more than likely, those credits should, should be accepted. So I hope that helps answer that first question that you have. Um, in order to find our schedule, uh, there is a link that I can share with you. Just give me a moment to bring that up. So the way you can look at those classes to, to tell if there are blended, you can look at a particular campus because obviously blended classes, you would have to come to a campus. Um, so if a campus is closest to you, how you would look, oh, thanks, Emily, you already put that in there. Um, you can select a campus and kind of sort out on this schedule to see if it's a blended class. Um, there should be indicated um, as a, with a, an icon to let you know that it's blended. And then online, of course, has an icon of a computer. Um, and then, of course, you can select a virtual learning um, or online classes to identify which ones are only online. And if you want to connect with other students in an online environment, um, that can be done through the Student Resource Center and Lounge. We also use a program called Connect Yard. It's a social engagement um, program uh, that many students kind of opt into a service to be able to receive communications um, from other students. Um, but the Student Resource Center and Lounge is a part of the learning management system. It's set up similar to a class, but not really. It's a little, it operates a little differently. And students are in there posting different messages in our discussion boards that are available. Um, there's another neat way to, to get connected with other students, again, is through the VLSAC or other clubs and organizations that might be on a campus, for instance. Um, but there are many ways that you can, of course, get involved, depending on what your interest level is. So, Stacy, if you have something specifically that you might be interested in, I can give you maybe a better idea of where you can connect with other students. And we do have students talking today, so I don't want to, of course, take away from anything that they might be sharing or, or you know, or sharing with, with you today. Um, some forums that you can get involved with. We do have uh, different forums uh, through our SGAs, through, the, again, clubs and organizations. Um, it, again, depends on what you're looking for. Um, I, actually, with regard to your other question, what if we take a specific online class and find that perhaps we will not learn very well in that way, and it would probably be better to take on campus. You're, this happens sometimes. Um, we do allow the, within the first week of classes, if you during the 100% um, refund period, and basically what that means if you if you decide if you're a few days into the class at Omino, I think I'm in well over my head. This is not going to work out for me. This is not the, a good setting for me. Or this, you know, maybe math. You don't want to take math online, for instance. You can certainly drop the course and add a face-to-face -face class if that works better for you, or add a blend class if one should be available, so I hope that helps to answer that question. Or if you get further along into the course and you've said that, you know, maybe this is not going to work out for you, we do have a process um, here at Hack where you can certainly drop a class um, depending on when you're wishing to do that. We'd have to make sure that we were in contact with the instructor um, to, to go about the best way to go about doing that. So I hope that helps to answer that question. And smart thinking is not necessarily for placement tests. Um, that that's a little separate. Uh, we do have a guide that we can, you know, you can certainly. Oh, thank you, Emily. Put the she's really fast. Thanks. Um, there's a link there that you can use to help you begin to look over and study for the material related to placement testing. If you're really kind of still unsure, you can come into our campus to see if so a folks a representative from the learning center or the tutoring and testing center, we've re recently changed the name, um, could assist you with maybe preparations for how to plan for your placement test. Um, but again, that link that Emily um, shared is another good place that you can reference to get started on beginning to look over review information about, about preparing for the placement test and some sample questions as well. 
So I, I do hope that answered your question. Um, I want to make sure I did answer all of them. I think I did. Um, so I will turn it back over to Emily, and hopefully we'll be able to hear from our students. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jasmine. That was a load of wonderful information. And if you would become a virtual learning student here at Hack, you'll work very closely with Jasmine. And you can probably hear from her presentation, she's a great help. And she sticks with students throughout their journey. So thank you, Jasmine. At this point, we'll be moving on to an exciting part of the program where you'll get to hear from current Hack students. We have two students that are joining us live today. Uh, we have one student was unable to make it live, but was able to give some feedback to some of the questions. So we have Stacy with us. We have Grace with us. Lamar, unfortunately, was not able to make it today. But like I said, he gave us some information and some answers to the questions that I'll share with you as we go through the student panel portion of our program. So Stacy and Grace, we are glad to have you joining us today. Before we get started with questions, I would like if you could introduce yourself. And Stacy, if you could get us started off, that would be great. Uh, once Stacy is uh, finished with her introduction, Grace, you can jump right into your introduction. And I'll start asking some questions from there. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me OK? All right, excellent. Um, well, my name is Stacy Cullen. I um, am a criminal justice major. I'm currently taking all online classes, but will likely have um, a mixture by the time I'm finished um, in pursuit of my degree. Um, you know, I'm well on my way. I'm, I'm actually an adult student returning um, to school, so I had some credits transfer from a previous institution. Um, so that was helpful. So I'll probably be finished in about three more semesters, hopefully, fingers crossed. Um, I chose Hack, and this is the biggest thing. I chose Hack because um, word of mouth, first of all, I had many friends that attended Hack and um, have recommended them as an excellent school. And you know, I love the flexibility of the fact that they have multiple campuses, um, and, the, and the online classes are definitely you know, important for me. Um, because I am a single mother, I work, you know, I need the flexibility that um, online classes offer. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am also the communications chair for the VLSAC that Jasmine was talking about recently. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm, I recently um, took on this role, so I'm very excited to get that going, and hopefully I'll be able to interact with some of you as you become future students and possibly future online students. So that's me. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Can you hear me? Awesome. OK. My name is Grace Whistler. Um, I'm actually a Mechanicsburg High School graduate in 2011. Um, I grew up my entire life in Charmanstown. Um, currently, I live in California. I've been here for two years with my husband. He's an active duty um, United States Marine. Um, we have two boys. Um, my oldest, Xander, is two and a half, and my youngest, Parker, is one. Um, so I am doing all online classes because they keep me extremely busy. Um, I am going for healthcare management, which is a new online major that started just this semester. I'm really excited. Um, I already have a dental certificate, so I kind of went on continuing in the healthcare um, realm. Um, I chose Hack uh, mainly because I am not a California resident, so I still needed to be able to get the maximum amount of benefits from um, federally and, and statewide. I had to go to a Pennsylvania school, um, and Hack was just kind of a no-brainer. Um, my husband's grandmother is a professor there, and we have a bunch of family and friends that go there. Um, and as I did more research, it just seemed perfect for me. Um, I think that's about it. I'm sure you'll hear more about my story along the way with a few of the other questions. But it's really good to be here and glad to meet you all. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, Grace, for introducing yourself. Lamar, like I said, Lamar Holmes was not able to make it here live, but Lamar is a marketing student at Hack, and he's taken all of his classes fully online. He's hoping to graduate next 
or spring 2017, so about a year and a half from now, uh, he was interested in HACK because he had quite a few individuals in his life that he felt were successful in their life and they had started out at HACK. So he wanted to attend the same diverse environment where he felt there were very uh, caring and passionate faculty and also very affordable uh, college. So that's a little bit about Lamar. At this point, I'll be moving on to our first question. Um, we're thrilled to have these students here so you can hear their perspective. So the first question that I would like to ask is, what services or resources do you recommend that students utilize? You heard some of the resources that I mentioned earlier in the presentation, but which ones mean a lot to you? Which ones have you utilized? And Grace will have you uh, start out. Grace, once you're done, um, Stacy, you can go right after Grace. So thank you. After Grace. So thank you. Um, well, obviously, there's a lot of services and resources um, for each individual student's different situations. Um, for us and my family, um, the ones that have been really important to us are military-related. Um, there is a program called My CAA, and if you give me a second, I'll put a link in the box just in case there's any other um, veterans or veteran um, spouses. Um, this is a grant that they give us, um, it's $4,000, and Hack is a participating college. Um, I also used it for Auburn University to get my dental assisting certificate, um, and I'm using the remainder towards Hack. Um, also, there is the VA services where you can look on um, the HACK website and it can send you a link straight to all of their contact information. And if you are a veteran, you get all kinds of stuff like veteran preference, you get to register for classes early, um, and, and they can tell you more about um, specifically what they do for veterans. Um, also, another big one was for me was the bookstore. Um, since this is my first semester ordering books and everything, I don't know about the rest of you, but I was kind of confused on, you know, where do I go and what do I do? And I just logged on to the bookstore, and it was really easy, and I just found my classes, and they have options for used books, for new books, um, and it ships straight to your house, which was perfect for me because I live in California. So um, I had my books within about a week and a half, um, and it was great. Um, so, yeah, those were the two for, for me personally. Um, that I would suggest taking a look at. What do you mean, Grace? You couldn't come back to Pennsylvania what do you mean, and pick up your book? You couldn't come back to Pennsylvania and pick your book? <laughs> no, unfortunately, a thousand dollar plane ticket was not worth getting books. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I agree. I, I, yeah, I, 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 military. Okay. Concerns that Grace did, but at those excellent resources that I've taken advantage of are the ones that have already been touched on, um, you know, earlier with some of the faculty. But I really want to reiterate the fact that um, you know financial aid is a huge um, undertaking, uh, and and to do it on your own, um, unless you're you know a seasoned student, um, it's really, it's very confusing, even for those of us that have done it before. Um, so definitely take advantage of the resources at the financial aid office. Um, the, the faculty there is very knowledgeable and helpful. Um, they, they have resources available that you might not even be aware of. Um, so definitely give that one. Um, also, your, your fellow students, as mentioned before, you know, even if you're an online student, there is that, um, you know, that student resource center and lounge. And um, sometimes it's easier to get to get feedback and, and guidance from your students, uh, your student peers, than um, and just have another perspective, you know, of somebody going through the same thing that you're going through, um, as opposed to always um, going to your professor. So that's definitely um, something I would definitely have you connect with your um, with your peers and other students of Hack. And then, you know, I'm biased, I must say, but I will say that if you take any online classes whatsoever, even if you only take one, you, I really recommend that you get involved with the BLSAC, even as just a council, <clears throat> excuse me, a general council member, um, so you can just stay abreast of all the things pertaining to you as an online student. 
we'd like to address any issues that you have. We want to be your voice in, um, you know, getting changes, you know, to, to the online um, learning platform and that kind of thing. Just anything that pertains to you as an online student is what we're interested in. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, and like Jasmine said earlier, we run all kinds of initiatives throughout the years and semesters, including bookstore discounts, giveaways, um, social meetings, and that kind of thing. So I think that the VLSIC is an excellent um, resource um, for anybody that even, like I said, even if you only take one online class, um, then it's important for you to be involved with that. Great, thank you. Those are some great suggestions, Grace and Stacy. And Stacy, I love your plug for VLSAC. That's a great club to get involved with. Uh, touching on what Lamar uh, sent to me, he typed me his answers, and he did not necessarily list a specific service or resources that he used. Instead, he just said students should use all, and he capitalized all, A-L-L, -L, services and resources. You know, why not use the resources and services available to you as a student? So another question for uh, Stacy and Grace, how do you successfully juggle your coursework with daily life responsibilities? And that's not just a particular question for virtual learning students. That is, you know, a question across the board. We live busy lives. So how have you found yourself to be successful with juggling everything in your life? Stacy? Uh, time management. Sorry, that was my door closing. <laughs> Time management is key. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a single mother. I have two children. I have two jobs. I take three online courses, and I serve as the communications chair at the VLSAC. Um, I, and that sounds like a lot, and, and I know a lot of people are like, what? Uh, but honestly, if I can do it, anybody can. Um, yeah, I have the flexibility of um, of taking online courses, but honestly, I invest just as much time in my online classes as I would if I had a traditional face-to-face -face class. Um, I just have to stay focused and prioritize and make sure um, I'm, I'm addressing everything that needs to be taken care of. So definitely time management. Like I said earlier, I will likely have to take some classes online because as of right now, my degree is not um, one that is available to complete 100% online. Um, so that will just all involve you know, time management and thankfully the flexibility of my, employ my employers. So that's it. Um, I agree 100% with Stacey. Um, that is the biggest thing that I pep talk myself about all the time is taking advantage of opportunities that are given on a daily basis, not procrastinating. Um, I ha also have a busy life. Like I said, I have two toddlers and husband's active duty. Um, he's home right now, but we've gone through two deployments in the last two years. Um, I've spent a lot of time alone in a strange state with two babies um, and, and trying to get things done. Um, I took nine credits this semester and I'm taking 13 next semester. And I have an internship at um, the state program Head Start. I'm also the parent um, committee president for the Head Start program. Um, and I'm, so I'm always running back and forth from there. Um, and I just always sit down beginning of the week and I write out what I have to do, when it's due by, when I think I'm going to have breaks in my schedule to do it, and if extra breaks show up, I take them. Um, because you never know what's going to pop up when you have kids and all of a sudden your day is hijacked. Um, the second thing is really to remain positive. Um, it's very easy to get overwhelmed and start getting frustrated. Um, and when that happens to me, I usually try to take a break for a few minutes and do something I, I like to do, whether it's I take a shower or I go take a walk or I get a cup of coffee. And I come back to it and I remind myself why I'm doing this, what the benefits are to doing this, and um, why um, you know, I need to continue to push forward. Um, I'm always telling my friends back home, you know, I'm 22, and a lot of my friends don't have kids and are just getting married or just finishing college. And I remind them all the time when they complain to me about how stressed they are with taking 12 credits and having a part-time job, how much harder it is when you have to do it when you have children and you have 
tons of bills and responsibilities and um, take advantage if you are a young student, take advantage of this time um, and really push forward in your work um, because you're given an opportunity that you're never going to have again once you start having a family. Um, so yeah, um, and, and also it really is key to give yourself breaks. I'm going to reiterate that because I'm very much guilty of taking care of my family first, taking care of my schoolwork first, and not leaving any time for me, and you just burn out if you do that to yourself. And make sure you have a balanced life, and you're allowing quality time with your friends and your family to be in there, things that you want to do, hobbies, um, and while still being responsible with your schoolwork. Thank you, Grace and Stacy. So it sounds like time management is key. It sounds like balance in life is key. And also keeping goals uh, at the forefront of all the hectic stuff that's going on in life. Uh, one thing that Lamar does is he tries to focus on each course on a specific day um, and tries to complete his cor coursework within a set time frame. Uh, he also tries to minimize distractions, so maybe staying in a room without um, Facebook popping up or kids knocking on the door, you know, really trying to be in a quiet, secluded area where he can focus on his studies. So great tips again with that. Now, the next question here, what has your big challenge? in college been so far? Grace, if you could explain what your biggest challenge has been. Um, I would say my biggest challenge has been trying to muddle through all the financial aid stuff. Um, because I am out of state, I have to contact financial aid through the phone. And sometimes um, getting communication uh, correctly through what I need, what I don't understand, has been kind of difficult, um, knowing what I'm eligible for, what I'm not eligible for. Um, so it's taken me a while to, to kind of get my finances in order and figure out um, maximizing how much I can, how much aid I can get and what I'm responsible for after. Um, that's probably been the biggest, the biggest uh, stepping, stepping block um, in my way. Um, and besides that, uh, my other uh, big problem is with being out of state. I know a lot of online students that are in um, Harrisburg area, they can go and take proctored exams at the campus. And um, because I'm in California, I had to find my own proctor, and I had to get myself to that proctor, and I have to um, coordinate um, with my, my teachers. Um, and um, the faculty in that category to get my tests mailed out and mailed back. And it can kind of be stressful and take away from my planning and studying process because I'm just anxious about even getting there and taking the test. Um, so that, that would probably also be one of the, the biggest difficulties I've experienced. Um, for me, I think um, because I am a returning adult student that has not been in the world of academia for quite some time, um, it was just getting back into the college mindset. And I still find myself slipping sometimes and thinking that, um, you know, just thinking not like a college student and not really focusing on, on the job at hand and the schoolwork that I need to complete. Um, and, you know, and being an online student, um, you know, while I still have the support of my professors and all the faculty at Hack. Um, you know, I don't have that daily or um, every or weekly reminder from a face-to-face -face professor um, to get stuff done. So it's definitely a matter of, um, for me, just staying focused and remembering, you know, to just get this stuff done. And, and time management, like I mentioned earlier, is very important. And I sometimes struggle with that because of the type of schedule that I have and because of the different commitments that I have. You know, I actually have a schedule that I printed out and put right in front of me on my wall. Um, about what I need to do at each specific time throughout the day. Of course, there's always flexibility in that, but it helps me stay on track. Um, so that's definitely been my biggest challenge. Um, and, I, and I think that even if you were a face-to-face -face student on campus, time management is still an issue because even, you know, even recent high school graduates 
um, have responsibilities a lot of times and have to make sure that they balance their life with work and school. So just managing that sometimes is a struggle, but um, it's definitely um, definitely worth it to just get that in line. Great. Well, thank you. I think Leanne made a great point. If you were watching in the chat box there, in that um, I know Grace mentioned about struggles with financial aid and going through the process. And we do have representatives here at HACC that can help students through that process. Or maybe some of your financial side of it was through our military and veterans affairs office. We're here to help you. Um, so please, you know, if you feel like you it is a challenge or a struggle, reach out to us. Same goes for uh, proctoring. Um, some of the Classes such as math may require proctored exams throughout the semester for the online uh, classes. And if you don't live close to a campus, yes, you do need to find an approved proctor. But that should not be an overburden uh, to you. And we do have individuals in our testing center that are happy to walk through that process with you to make it less of a challenge, less of a, a burden, because we want you to focus your attention on your studies and having a great time here at HAC. But I do appreciate you being very real, you know, with the different challenges that you have experienced uh, so far with your time being a student at Hack. And um, Stacy, the time management thing is crucial as well. So thanks for sharing that. I do have another question here for both of you. Um, how do you feel supported by Hack, Stacy? Um. You know, even as a virtual student, I feel like I have all the support and guidance that I need from my professors, just as if I were on campus. They're still very much involved in the class and always there to answer any questions that I have. So for those that, that are kind of hesitant to take an online class because they don't feel like they're going to get the guidance and support that they need, with Hack at least, that is not the case. Um, so you can definitely, you know, rest assured that you will get the support and guidance that you need to make it successfully through your classes. Um, <clears throat> also. Um, you know, advisors, of course, are always willing to help and talk you through your choices and decisions. And Jasmine, specifically as the VLSAC advisor, um, she's been um, she's been a godsend for me um, because, like I said, I'm a returning student um, after years of being out of school. And when I went to school previously, I never had online classes. So, um, you know, that that was that was new to me. This technology and navigating through the the online course platform. Um, is new to a lot of people, so Jasmine has been um, amazing in, in guiding me through that. And then, of course, my fellow classmates um, who engage in discussions and, and um, are excellent sources for assistance and, and opposing perspectives and that kind of thing. Um, and lastly, I just want to say that Hack is um, very big. I've learned in just the short time that I've been here, they're very big on continual growth and improvement. So if you ever have any suggestions, ideas, ways that things can be done differently, um, you know, they're always open to that because they know that, that you're the student and you, you know what's going to work best for you. So, um, you know, go to your professors, go to your advisors, go to your organizations and make these suggestions. Um, and because Hack is very open to, to change and improvement. So. Um, I agree with Stacy um, about our professors. Um, being an online student only and not being able to come into the classroom, I have still felt very supported. If I have a question, I email my teachers. Um, you know, they usually get back to me within 24 hours maximum. You know, if it's a holiday, maybe 48. Um, they're always extremely helpful, extremely, extremely understanding. Um, their participation in the um, discussions and, and guiding us in certain directions um, is also really helpful. Um, also, um, my advisor is great and staying in contact with her has been helpful. Even just silly questions like, hey, do I have to submit a residency form every semester, or every month? And she's just able to shoot me back a line and clear that up for me. Um, and everybody seems to be working on the same team, and um, they really want to help you. And um, you know, I really appreciate that, and it really helps me um, to get the answers that I, I find myself needing. So 
Thank you. It's music to my ears to hear how supported both of you have felt as students. And Lamar echoed the same. He felt very supported by his professors. Um, he said that they extended their hands in ways that he could never imagine that they would help. Um, and very supportive, reassuring, and passionate. So kudos to our professors here at HACC, our advisors, Jasmine, many of the individuals that are supporting our students to help you be successful and enjoy your time here at HACC. I have one last question uh, for our student panel here. But before I ask the question, I do want to give a reminder um, about our tuition giveaway. We have a $1,000 tuition giveaway that we'll be handing out here uh, shortly, but you do need to be entered into the drawing. The SurveyMonkey link that I just posted there in a chat box, make sure you're filling out your information to be put in the drawing for our $1,000 tuition giveaway, which is good towards the spring or summer semesters that are coming up here. The last question I have, how do you feel Hack is preparing you for the next steps in your life? Grace. Um, well, Hack is a great transfer school, and um, my hope is to later on down the road transfer transfer to a bachelor's degree, um, which I probably will do at Penn State or Penn State Harrisburg. Um, and so this is uh, uh, allowing me to feel confident that at least most of my credits are going to transfer, and I'll be able to go back to school. Um, and as far as just currently, just within my first semester, I just feel more empowered and I feel more um, confident in myself that I can do this. Um, and if HAC had not set things out in a way that made things um, go smoothly for me, I, you know, I may not have felt that way. But everyone was just so helpful and, and so willing to answer questions. Um, that I am now able to feel confident. Um, and, and of course, the ultimate goal of all of us going to school is to enter the workforce and be able to take care of ourselves or our families. And I definitely feel like um, from doing research on what kind of jobs I can get with um, my associate's degree, I feel very confident that this program will allow me um, to do something good in my career. You know, and I honestly have to say that I agree 100% with Grace. Um, you know, I could have, you know, just skipped right over my associate's degree and went straight to a bachelor's because that's what I'm going to need for my career in the long run. But I felt um, <clears throat> I felt drawn to hack um, in a way that, you know, it, being a returning student, um, you know, I felt like I needed to start on a smaller scale. I felt like, um, you know, taking the steps through hack first would really prepare me um, more for the um, the long-term um, bachelor degree goal. So that's why I wanted to start back here. Um, and I feel like they're really um, getting me prepared. And also, I feel like um, you know, there's there's been a lot more opportunity to get involved since I've been a student at Hack than there ever was at any previous school that I attended. Um, and I feel like I'm getting you know great opportunities to help my fellow students and to stay involved and and you know learning my leadership skills as a VLSAC. Um, executive chair um, member, I, I just feel like, or excuse me, executive council member, I feel like it's really teaching me um, leadership skills that will go a long way, um, both in my um, pursuit of my degrees as well as in my um, career and entering into the workforce, re-entering to the workforce, I should say, um, in, in the new career um, that I have chosen. So HEC has been an excellent resource for that. Great. Thanks, Stacy and Grace. And Lamar said something very similar. He feels that Hack is a stepping stone to a more successful future. Uh, he is also hoping to transfer off to get a, a bachelor's degree in business. And he thinks that Hack is one of the best decisions that he's made to assist him in requiring a better and promising future. So glad that Hack can help you as students and many other students as well. We're, that's what we're all about, you know, helping students get to where they want to be in life. So thank you. Uh
Stacy and Grace for answering questions, giving the perspective of a student. Uh, but at this point, I do want to open it up in case there are questions uh, from our participants. Our participants are now in the question seat. Uh, feel free to ask any questions to any one of the presenters. Uh, we heard from Leanne from Financial Aid. We heard from Deb with Advising and Career Services. We heard from Jasmine as a faculty member um, and also student success. And then we also heard from Stacy and Grace as current hack students. So if you have any questions for any one of our presenters, feel free to type it there in the chat box. Um, I know that we uh, went through some general hack information, too, at the beginning. And if you have any general hack questions, feel free to type it there in the chat box. This time is for you to ask your questions. Um, and while you're uh, thinking about your questions here, I want to give the last call for our $1,000 tuition giveaway. If you're interested in that, this is the last call to enter into the $1,000 tuition tuition giveaway. You can see the link there in the chat box. Uh, please make sure you go and fill out essentially a raffle. And we'll be announcing the winner of our $1,000 tuition, tuition giveaway winner shortly. So make sure you go and do that if you haven't already. And while you're typing your question, I just I want to give a sincere thank you to all of the presenters that helped out today. We heard from Leanne and Deb and Jasmine, Stacy, Grace. Thank you for being a part of the presentation. And I hope you as attendees were able to get the information that you needed. And I hope that you learned a lot about HACK. We do hope to see you here as students. And if you remember, the first step to becoming a student is to apply online. And that's at HACK. Dot edu. I'll type in the address here. If you want to go and apply now, you can do so at hack.edu. So thanks to all of our presenters. Thanks to you as participants for coming on and uh, watching our online open house for fall 2015. Good. I'm, I'm so glad that you found this to be a helpful presentation. Thanks for your kind words, Stephanie. Looks like we do have a question uh, wondering if you would need to complete the placement test before November. Uh, no, you do not need to complete the placement test before November. Uh, here at HACC, we have rolling admissions, meaning you can essentially apply whenever. You know, you do have to have everything completed before the semester starts. So the semester starts on January 19th. Uh, we advise that you go through the admission steps sooner rather than later, and the new student registration begins on November 9th. But you can register for classes up until the start of classes. It can be very stressful if you wait until the last minute as you're running around trying to get everything done. Uh, but it does not have to be, the placement test does not have to be completed before November. Great question. Any other questions from our participants today? And we still have all of the presenters here, you know, Deb, Leanne, Grace, Stacy, Jasmine. So now's the time to ask your question if you have any questions in, in those specific areas that they presented. Looks like we do have another question here. Um, LPN who's working full time and you're interested in obtaining your RN, what advice would you give? Well, we do have health career advisors here at Hack that will walk you through the process, but the beginning process is very much the same as any other student in that you would need to apply First, uh, we can get you the information as far as the health career advisors uh, that you can reach out to, and they'll give you very detailed information as far as what you would need to do uh, to go that pathway. Great question.
I'll pull up the information now for uh, the hack health career advisor. That, that way you do have that information. Oh, thank you, Deb. Looks like you also gave some additional information about individuals that are hoping to go the pathway LPN to RN. Thanks, Deb. Looks like we do have another question here, too. Uh, Sherry, it looks like your main focus is to be able to do payroll and taxes, and you're wondering if there is a course or a class that could be taken without having to do the, the bookkeeping diploma. We have a variety of different courses that changes every semester, um, both online and on our campuses. And our students work very closely with advisors here at HACC that will help them figure out the exact class or classes, program, whether it's diploma, certificate, associate degree, or maybe you just want to take a class or two in that particular area. Uh, so we can post the link for where you can search the different courses. You can look ahead to see what we're offering this spring. And then Sherry, I recommend that you work very closely with an advisor to uh, figure out exactly what class or classes that would be to help you reach your end goal. Great question. You can see there in the chat box, I did post the class schedule. Feel free to check that out. Uh, as a new student or even a returning student, you know, it's great to see, to look ahead uh, to the spring semester to see what's offered. New student registration begins November 9th, so coming up here in less than a month. Any other questions, feel free to type it there in the chat box. If you don't have questions for me, then I'm going to start asking questions of you. I, I do have a few other uh, poll questions that I did want to bring out here. So I, I am going to do that this time. I'll certainly take any questions um, during or after these polls. But I would like to... Uh, Ask another poll question here, and I'm just wondering what you were hoping, I guess I should say, what were you hoping to learn from today's event? And you can choose more than one. You can choose, you know, were you wanting to know how to apply to HACC? Were you wanting to know about scholarships? Maybe online classes or HACC programs, financial aid, or maybe there was even something else that we didn't cover in depth that you were hoping to know a little bit more about. And we're um, open to any feedback that you have about this event. This is our second time running our online open house here at HACC, and we always want to make our event better for students so you can make, you can get the best out of your experience here finding out information. So looks like you are all wanting to know a mix of some different information and online classes seems to be the front runner. Um, so great. Hopefully you did find this program to be helpful. And another uh, poll question here while I pull it into the box here. How likely would you recommend HACC's online open house to others? 
We do offer the open house on any one of our campuses as well as online. We realize students are at a distance. We realize students have busy lives and maybe you couldn't make it to a campus today or maybe you just prefer attending online. So thanks for your positive feedback. I'm glad to hear that you would recommend the online open house to others. And we do uh, plan to, to continue to offer this to meet your needs, you know, whether you're afar, from afar or you know, just want this option. Another poll question for you. And let me make the box bigger here. If this event were not held today, would you still become a hack student? I'm curious what your answer is. Yes or no? Did this event really help you? Or you think you would have become a hack student anyway? Great, it looks like many of you are planning to become a hack student, so we're happy that you'll be jumping on board and becoming a hawk here in the future. I do have just a few other uh, poll questions for you here, keeping you busy. This is somewhat similar to a question that I asked just a little bit ago here, but how would you describe your overall online open house experience here at Hack? Did you feel it was excellent, good, fair, poor? Uh, I'll put my email address here in the chat box. If you have any feedback or suggestions for this event, please reach out to me. We do want to make this a great event for you. Great. Thanks for your positive feedback again for that. I have yet another poll question here for you, and soon we'll be announcing the $1,000 tuition giveaway uh, winner. So I'm procrastinating here to make this um, a fun announcement for you. So I do have another question here. After this event, has your impression of hack improved? Maybe you already had a great impression of hack, or maybe you know you need it, a little bit of improvement with your impression uh, with hack. So yes, has your impression of hack improved, or slightly remain the same? No. Good. It looks like a lot of your impressions um, did improve. So thank you. Okay, well thank you. One last question. You might get a kick out of this last one, but I had to do it. This is the last poll question. If you're getting sick of these, you can celebrate now. <laughs> Are you sick of poll questions and ready for the $1,000 tuition giveaway? You're crazy if you say no. <laughs> okay. Oh, great. It looks like everyone is ready for the tuition giveaway, and I hope that you did not miss the opportunity to put your name into the, the drawing there. All right. So one thing, like I said, this is I'm procrastinating because I'm about to announce the $1,000 tuition giveaway winner, but I want you to remember some important dates that are coming up. I encourage you to apply today at hack.edu. New student registration begins on November 9th, and there are some upcoming program days, Health Career Exploration Day on Harrisburg campus on November 4th, also two different webinar program days, Building Construction Management on October 8th, as well as the Communication Program webinar on November 11th, and you can find out some more information by going to hack.edu backslash program days. Okay, well, it is time. I think you've put up with enough from me uh, procrastinating here, and uh, you've been given a lot of information about hacks. So you've been great participants at today's event. Um, this is a winner for the $1,000 tuition giveaway, which is good towards our spring or summer 2016 semesters. There's a $1,000 dollar bill. I don't know if anybody has ever seen one of those in their life, but uh, supposedly they do exist out there. 
So if you all are ready, the $1,000 tuition giveaway for our virtual 2015 fall open house is Faith Brenneman. So congratulations, Faith Brenneman. I'll type the name here in the chat box. Faith, you are our $1,000 tuition giveaway winner. So congrats to uh, Grace. Grace, I will be in touch with you to let you know what the next steps are as far as obtaining that $1,000 tuition giveaway. So huge congrats to you. I do want to thank everybody for attending today. We are here to support you along the way as you pursue your further education. Um, we will be sticking around here for the next two hours to answer any questions that you may have. Don't feel like you need to stick around, but that's what we're here for. Um, I'll be here uh, to answer any questions. And then um, if you have any questions right now for our presenters, now is the time to ask them since they'll be heading out here in a few minutes. Um, so we'll stick around for any last questions that you do have. And thanks for attending the open house today. You are welcome to leave at any point um, if you do feel like your questions have been answered and you got the information that you need it. And we'll be posting this uh, recording of the online open house from this morning on our Facebook page. That's uh, the Hack Virtual Facebook page. So I'll put the link here in the chat box. You're welcome to check out the recording. It should be posted, I would guess, in about an hour or so. Um, and you can like our Facebook page. We do update that regularly, and it's a great way to stay in touch with us. So thanks for attending. Like I said, feel free to type any questions that you have there in the chat box, and um, we'll be here to answer them. Thank you. Hope you have a great day if you're leaving.